Hi everyone. So recently we've been doing a lot of planty projects in videos. And so today I kind of just felt like looking at some pretty plants. So we're going to be taking a look at 20 new house plants that are hitting the market that I am absolutely loving. And so I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about them too. Now I say new, but newish might be the more appropriate term for some of these, but even for those ones, I'm just starting to see them a lot more frequently and in more places on the market right now. And most of these plants today we're gonna to be looking at are considered rare, but some of them do fall a bit more towards the common end on the rarity spectrum. So we're gonna be seeing a lot of variety today. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoot over slightly so I can flash these up on screen for you and we'll get started. So the first plant I actually wanna take a look at with you guys today is an Epipriminum. And previously all the Epipriminums that we have looked at together have either been Oriums or they've been Pinatums. And this is a different type. So this is an Epipriminum Amplissimum and the variety is known as Silver Strike and look how beautiful this plant is with these kind of bluish greenish type leaves and then as you can see there is this fine silver striping running down these leaves hence why it is called silver stripe. Now an interesting thing about this plant compared to most epipremenums is that it will not get fenestrations as it matures over time. So these leaves will continue to look like this except that they will just get longer and broader as they mature. So if you're a person who's not a big fan of fenestrated leaves and you don't own an epipremenum because of that and you think this plant looks really cute, be aware, it's not gonna get fenestrations, which means it would be a great option for you. Now, there are other varieties of this type of epipremenum out there that don't have any kind of variegation or anything on them as well. So if you don't like the silver stripe look, but you do like the idea of having one of these because you don't want fenestrations, definitely go check those out as well. But this one is relatively, like I said, new to the market. And I just think it's stunning. I think it's beautiful. And so I wanted to share that one with you guys first today. But I do have another epipremenum that I wanna talk about as well. So let's move on to that one next. And this one is actually a pinnatum. So this is epipremenum pinnatum marble. Now I have seen this labeled as like marble with something else after it sometimes. I don't really know what the difference is, if there's a difference or not, but typically you're gonna see epipremenum pinnatum marble and it might have something else after it if you're looking for this plant. But what I love about this plant is it is very reminiscent of the Epipremenum aureum marble queen. It's got that speckly marbly variegation on it. I do find that when I've seen this plant, it is a bit whiter in color than the marble queen pothos is. That one has a bit more of a cream color, but it can range and it definitely will range depending on how much light you're getting this plant in as well. Now, I did try to find out the origins of this plant for you guys to let you know if this variegation is stable or not. I struck out. But once again, it does remind me a lot of the Orient Marble Queen and that variegation is pretty stable. So I'm going to lean towards it's probably fairly stable on this plant. I could be wrong. If anybody out there owns one and knows, please comment down below and let us know. But this is just a beautiful, stunning plant. And just like other Epipremenum pinnatums, as those leaves mature, they're gonna get longer, they're gonna get broader, and they're gonna develop fenestration. Now, I have seen these in person for sale when I did my plant shop tour of cultivar. They were pretty pricey, but once again, I am starting to see them a lot more frequently. And so as I start to see them more frequently, typically what will happen is I will also see the prices starting to drop. So if it's a little bit out of your price range or whatever price is being sold in in your area, just wait it out for a bit because I really think we're gonna see more and more of these available and that price is gonna start to go down. But the next plant I wanna look at, I am super excited about because you guys know how much I love my Ficus Elasticas that I own. And this is a new type of Ficus Elastica that I'm seeing pop up a lot, especially up in Canada. So all you Canadians pay attention. This is a Ficus Elastica Shiveriana Moonshine. And this has similar kind of look to the patterning on the previous plant that we looked at with that kind of speckled marbleish variegation on here. So it is kind of a cream yellowish colored leaf with that green speckling. And when the new leaves come in, just like on most ficus elasticas, they have that pinkish reddish hue to them that looks absolutely gorgeous next to this type of variegation. An absolutely stunning plant. These are pretty rare, but like I said, starting to see them more frequently now. 
The care requirements though for these plants are gonna be exactly the same as your regular ficus elasticas. So if you have mastered the care of your ficus elasticas that you already own, you should be good to go in terms of caring for this one. Now, just like your other variegated ficus elasticas, such as your ruby or your teneke, in order to keep this variegation going, you're gonna need to make sure this plant is getting enough light. But the next plant that I wanna look at is actually a maranta, and you guys know how much I love my marantas, and this one is known as maranta light veins and you can see here it has this light colored veining running across these leaves hence how it got its name and if i'm being honest with you this plant actually really reminds me of like my maranta kirchoviana but with this light veining laid on top of it it's very stunning it's almost kind of like a cross between that plant and maybe the lemon lime maranta if that makes sense i don't know i see it let me know if y'all see it or not but that's what it reminds me of and i think it's just an absolutely stunning plant now, I have been trying to check into the care for this one to see if it is more complicated than your lemon lime marantas or your green marantas or your red marantas. And so far, it looks like it's pretty similar to those plants. I have, however, been hearing that the maranta that is on the top of my wish list right now, the black maranta, is apparently really, really difficult. So difficult that the only seller I know of selling it right now has put a disclaimer on their site that they are not responsible if it dies within like very short time period or anything like that. So I'm kind of now a little bit hesitant, to be honest with you guys, about whether I am going to acquire that plant unless the price seriously drops from where it is right now. But I digress. This one seems to be relatively easy to take care of. So if you have had success with your lemon lime marantas, your green marantas, your red marantas, you should be able to handle this one as well. But just another beautiful, stunning plant that is relatively new to the market. Now, for all you philodendron pink princess fans out there, I really, really want to know your opinions on this next plant. And it is called the philodendron orange princess. So just like the philodendron pink princess, this is a semi-vining philodendron, which once again, quick reminder, that means that it will climb if you wanna give it a pull, but it might not readily attach without a lot of help from you, but eventually over time, you can get it growing up a pull. Now, as you can see, this plant has this beautiful orange speckling on these leaves. The leaves come in this kind of darkish, orangish color, and then over time, that leaf will green off, and that orange speckling turns into kind of like a sandstone type color on that plant, but it's always gonna be that kind of speckled variegation on this plant. So here's actually a comparison picture for a pink princess next to the orange princess so that you guys can kind of see the difference. And the biggest difference I'm seeing with these plants is that the variegation is highly sectoral on the pink princess, meaning big patches of color, versus on the orange princess, it seems to mostly be that speckling. And actually, that typically would be a sign to me that that variegation on the orange princess is probably gonna be a bit more stable than what you see on the pink princess because the sectoral variegation, that is the most unstable form of variegation just as a reminder. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that the reversion rate on the orange princess is probably quite a bit lower than it is on the pink princess. But if you are a pink princess fan and let's say you also don't particularly like this orange princess because well, you like pink, Boy, do I have a plant for you. It is the last one we are gonna look at today. And I actually think it's way more beautiful than the Pink Princess. So definitely stay tuned for that. But moving on to our next plant, it actually is another philodendron. This is actually an upright or AKA self-heading philodendron. So just a reminder, philodendrons that are upright, they're gonna stay relatively short, but they're gonna get pretty wide over time. So you wanna make sure you have enough space for them if you like this plant. But this is known as philodendron snowdrift. And as you can see, these leaves come in as a creamish, almost whitish color with green speckles, very similar to some of the previous plants we've looked at. Then as the leaves mature over time, they kind of convert into kind of this light, dusty green color. And I just think this plant is absolutely beautiful. It gives me winter vibes, you know, this time of season, it's giving me like holiday vibes as well, but it's just an absolutely stunning and beautiful plant. I'm seeing this one pop up a lot in Canada as well, but I've also seen it in some places around here here too, so I think it's probably working its way down across North America. But the next plant I want to look at is actually the only alocasia on the list today, and this is actually one of those plants that's not really a new, new plant, but more on the new-ish side, but I wanted to include it because I'm starting to see it pop up a lot more frequently and readily available in places, and that is alocasia jacqueline. And look how beautiful this plant is. There are so many things I love about this plant. This plant honestly combines like 
things I like about other types of alocasia, like the leathery texture of the leaf of an alocasia maharani, this plant has that. The stunning petioles that are speckled and almost kind of striped looking on an alocasia zebrina, this plant has that. This beautiful toothed shape to this leaf, kind of like you see on a poly. So it's like it's taking all these little things I individually like about other alocasia and combining them into one absolutely stunning plant. The other thing that is very interesting and unique about the alocasia jacqueline is this coloring. So it's slightly variegated, but it's hard to tell like what's going on here, but there's like a little bit of yellow and green on green variegation. And the way it presents, it almost makes it look like the leaf is glowing, which is just so beautiful. It is definitely a very unique plant and I am super happy that I am seeing it pop up in more places. But moving on to our next plant, this is actually gonna be the only Anthurium on our list and this is the Anthurium Silver Blush. And as you might've guessed, called the silver blush because the veining on this plant is super silver, it is super wide, but it's not very sharp. It's not like a super defined sharp edge on that veining. It kind of feathers and kind of looks fuzzy as it spreads out. So that's why it kind of makes it look like it's blushing silver. Now, another thing I absolutely love about this anthurium is this rounder leaf shape. It's kind of a squatter rounder leaf than most anthuriums that have this kind of look to them. However, I have seen some plants when I was looking online at various places that were selling this that claim they're selling this silver blush, but the shape of the leaf was drastically different. So it was more thin and elongated. I think that's a completely different plant, honestly. So just be aware of that if you do decide that you wanna get this plant and you're shopping around for it. It may say silver blush, but if it's not this kind of round shape that you're seeing here, I really think that's a different variety of anthurium. But another thing I absolutely love about this plant is when the new leaves come in, they come in this pinkish color and it just looks really stunning against the backdrop of that beautiful silver veining. So absolutely gorgeous. I think I'm gonna have to add this one to my wish list, you guys. It might actually replace the Clarinervium on my list. We'll see. So the next plant on our list is actually a type of plumeria. And you guys know I own a plumeria, just kind of a standard plumeria, but I absolutely love plumeria flowers. They're gorgeous, they smell wonderful. So when I saw this plant creeping into the marketplace, like I had to bring it up for you guys today because this is what is known as a red variegated plumeria. And so once again, as you can see, we have that whitish creamish coloring with the green speckling. Now that I think about it, a lot of the plants we're looking at today kind of have this green marbleish on white variegation. Maybe it's just becoming super popular right now and that's why we're seeing more of these plants pop up on the market, but absolutely beautiful. It does get kind of a reddish pinkish cast to the leaves, especially when they're new, when you have it in bright enough light. So that is why it's called red variegated but a beautiful, beautiful plant. It's still gonna produce those stunning flowers that smell absolutely fabulous. I mean, they're pretty expensive, you guys, but I would love to have one of these to add into my little tropical oasis I have going on in my backyard. But there's a whole nother type of plant that is super popular right now as well. And once again, some of these aren't like new, new, but I just feel like these plants are like in right now, big time in, and that's plants labeled as Aureas. And so when we're talking about aurea plants, we're talking about plants that feature yellow variegation. So for example, Syngonium aurea that you're seeing here, this beautiful green leaves with this stunning yellow variegation. Typically it's fairly sectoral in nature, the yellow variegation is. So once again, this is gonna be slightly unstable variegation. However, nowhere near as unstable as you see with like albo plants because that white variegation is just so much more unstable than yellow variegation. There's also the Epipermenum pinnatum aureum. So once again, just your standard Epipermenum pinnatum shape, but with that stunning yellow variegation. You've also got your Monstera standaliana aurea that you're seeing here. Let's see, you've also got the Monstera adnasonii Aurea. So this is the smaller variety, kind of longer shaped leaf monsteras that still have those beautiful fenestrations in them. But perhaps my most favorite aurea plant at the moment is actually the Monstera deliciosa aurea. Now you might also sometimes see this labeled as a Monstera deliciosa marmorata, I think is how it's pronounced. Just know that those are one in the same, but just look how beautiful these leaves are with this gorgeous yellow variegation. And sometimes you can get those half moon leaves where one half of it's green, one half of it is yellow. And every now and again, just like albo plants sometimes do, you can get an all yellow leaf. But just a reminder, if that does happen, you don't want it to keep putting out all yellow leaves because then eventually it won't be able to sustain itself and it will die. But just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. However, the next Monstera that we are about to take a look at 
might be my favorite new Monstera. I don't know. I really like the Thai constellation. And actually, I have a hunch that this plant is some kind of like mutation that happened to a Thai constellation. I'm not 100% certain, but just looking at it, I think that's what's happened here. But this is what is known as the Monstera Miracle. You also might hear this referred to as the Monstera Tricolor and look how beautiful this plant is. So basically we've got like that look of the Thai constellation with that kind of more speckled variegation on it, but then we're getting some sectoral coloration mixed in there as well. And this is just absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, to me, this kind of looks like you took a Thai constellation, an Aurea and an Albo, and you combine them into one plant. And I just think it's beautiful. I mean, I'm just gonna say it. It, it it's, it's going on my wish list ahead of the Thai constellation. But unfortunately, these are pretty rare and hard to find right now. This is one of those new, new plants. So we aren't seeing a lot of these everywhere right now. But as soon as somebody figures out how to tissue culture it, I guarantee you they're gonna be popping up everywhere. So definitely make a mental note of it and keep an eye out for that in your area. So up next, I actually have several Syngonium I wanna talk about that are new or new-ish to the market, but I am starting to see this first one in particular popping up a lot more. And that is what is known as Syngonium 3 Kings. Now I have no clue why it is called Three Kings. If anybody out there happens to know, comment down below and let us know. But I just think this is a stunning plant. And I have seen variations of this where the leaves are kind of a minty colored green with a darker green, like big patches. Not quite sectoral though. Sometimes when these leaves come in, they do look sectoral, but other times they don't. So I'm not really sure exactly what the type of variegation we're seeing here is. It could be a combination of several types, but that beautiful dark patches of green on that kind of light mint leaf is stunning. Now I have seen some of these as well where the leaves seem to be even a bit lighter than this, almost white, but not quite. I don't know if that just has to do with like how much lighting it's getting or what, but regardless, I think this is an absolutely stunning and beautiful plant. Now another plant, another Syngonium that is very similar to this, and by the way, before I forget, these are both Syngonium podophyllums. Just wanna be clear on that because we are gonna look at a Syngonium here next that is not a podophyllum. But this plant kind of gets similar patterning to the Three Kings to me, except that it's more like the middle of the leaf stays a dark green and then you kind of get the white on the edges. And so what you're looking at here is Syngonium Podophyllum T25. Yeah, T25. Not very often do I show you guys plants that don't have like an actual name name on them, but there are a lot of plants out there that are just labeled with like letters and numbers just based off you know, whoever cultivated them or whatnot, and this is one of them. So Syngonium Podophyllum T25, and this is actually a dwarf type Syngonium. So this one is gonna stay relatively small, but here's a picture where you can see what the Three Kings looks like. I think it's gonna be, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get confused. It, I think it's gonna be the, no, it'll be on that side, the Three Kings. If I'm wrong, I'll flash it up on screen. And on this side is the T25. So you can see they kind of have like sort of a similar look, but you can also tell that this is a smaller plant. This is a more dwarf variety plant. The leaves are not gonna get nearly as big. And so definitely like a beautiful, beautiful option if you're looking for a smaller type Syngonium. But the next Syngonium I wanna look at is actually a type that we've never looked at before. And that is the Syngonium Chia Pins and this is a variegated version. So as you can see, super beautiful, kind of reminds me a little bit of like an Albo Syngonium Podophyllum, but with Chia Pinces, the leaves are very different. So with those Podophyllums, over time, the leaves get lobed. So you're gonna have definitive lobed leaves up at the top, but with the Chia Pins, you don't get that. That leaf is just gonna get you know, longer and broader and stay basically that same shape over time. But beyond that, the growth pattern and the basic care requirements are pretty similar to your Syngonium podophyllums. I just think this is just a beautiful plant though. I don't know, I actually like this one better than the Podophyllum albo. I don't know if it's just the leaf shape that makes me like it more or what, but once again, just a beautiful, beautiful plant. Now we only have two more plants we're gonna be looking at today and the next one is the only Hoya on the list. And I'm not like a huge Hoya person. I don't know why I just said that, you guys. I, I actually have a decent number of Hoyas. I guess I should say I'm just not, like one of those people who's really into like all the different types of Hoyas and all the rare varieties and all that. When I do see some rare ones though, they catch my eye and I make a mental note. And this is one of those ones that caught my eye. I'm seeing it pop up a lot more and kind of like the Three Kings, the Syngodium Three Kings we were looking at, I'm seeing different kind of color variations and I'll explain what I think is going on there in a second. But this is what is known as Hoya Carnosa Wilbur Graves. 
However, you are probably going to see something after Wilbur Graves and typically it's probably gonna be a country. So either China, Russia, whatever it may be. And part of the reason for that is there seems to be kind of different varieties. I don't know if it's different varieties. Where these plants were being cultivated, I think they have a slightly different look. And so what country they were coming out of, people were slapping that on the end of the name. And I think that kind of is how people are differentiating it. Anybody out there who's like a more of a Hoya aficionado than me who might know more, definitely comment down below. But this one we're looking at here, I believe is a ch one that's labeled China. And I absolutely love this one. This one has this beautiful dark color with this like silverish variegation on it. But let me show you this picture of this one over here, where as you can see, much lighter, like almost looks like white compared to that other one. And I think this one is one of the ones that I found that was labeled Russia. So lots of kind of variations it seems out there, but I actually think this first one with this dark, dark foliage is just absolutely stunning. I have never been a huge, huge fan of just the standard Hoya Carnosa. I do love my Hoya Carnosa Compactas, but this right here, I would not mind having this Hoya Carnosa. It is just absolutely beautiful. But moving on to our last plant, and this is the one where I said, if you are a fan of philodendron pink princesses, get ready, because I think this is so much more beautiful than a pink princess. Of course, then again, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the philodendron pink princess for many reasons, but take a look at this plant. This is a philodendron tricolor white princess. How beautiful is this? This plant is just stunning. And it's got the combinations of the green, the white, and the pink. And you know, this actually kind of reminds me of another one of the plants that's currently on my wish list, and that is the philodendron red Anderson. The only difference here is instead of red, it's got pink. But I just think this is so much more beautiful than the pink princess. I don't know. You, you know, feel free to disagree with me down below if you want. No hard feelings if you do. I just think this is way more beautiful and I actually wouldn't mind owning one of these and owning a Philodendron Red Anderson, but unfortunately the pricing on both is gonna need to come way down for me before that is ever gonna happen. But definitely a stunning Philodendron and this is also a semi-vining Philodendron, just like your Philodendron Pink Princesses and just like that Philodendron Orange Princesses that we looked at earlier. So it will climb a pole, but you might just really have to help it along in terms of getting it started. But I hope you guys have enjoyed looking at all of these gorgeous plants with me today. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And if there are any new plants popping up on the market in your area that I didn't mention today that have caught your eye because they are absolutely stunning, please be sure to let us know down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.